Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today we have a video concerning Venus flytrap dormancy. We're going to be talking about how to prepare your Venus flytrap for dormancy and then also how to kind of maintenance and care for your Venus flytraps during the dormancy period. A lot of people kind of forget about their Venus flytraps because of dormancy, but it is important that we kind of maintain and take care of them throughout dormancy, even though it's less than during the growing season. It is still really important that they do receive some maintenance and care but we're gonna go ahead and talk about that today, so let's get started. As you can see here, we have some Venus flytraps that are kind of well into the dormancy process. You can see they're very well overgrown at this point. We have a lot of black, kind of dead growth that's sitting in there. And I kind of want to show you exactly what I do at this point to make sure that I'm caring for these and probably what I should have done already in terms of getting my Venus flytraps prepared for dormancy. I'm a little late on this, but um, I recommend doing this as soon as your temperatures stop and then also doing it probably three or four more times throughout the dormancy process just to make sure you're caring for them and giving them some upkeep through the dormancy process. One thing you'll notice, and I actually have a video all about what to look for for signs of dormancy. You'll notice that all these Venus flytraps are growing very low and stocky, really close to the soil here. So you can see that's a, that's a telltale sign of dormancy. They stop growing really big and tall. You can even see this. My Amptoboros here is actually really, really low. A lot of the growth is actually underneath the green here. If you're interested in seeing the different signs of dormancy, make sure to check out that video as soon as we're done here. I'll pop that up on the screen for you when we're done. But what we're gonna talk about today isn't necessarily the signs of dormancy. We're gonna talk about what we're doing to take care of these Venus flytraps now that we're in dormancy. All right, so what you wanna do when your Venus flytraps are getting ready for dormancy and you're wanting to prepare them for the long kind of cold spell is there's a couple of things to take into consideration. Uh, one, you really don't want all this really high green mossy stuff unless your Venus flytraps are gonna be in a situation where they're kind of dry and really, really cold. So if you're in a zone that gets you know really cold over winter time, or you don't have a place to put these and you have to keep them outside and you're constantly below freezing, I actually recommend keeping this moss on there to help insulate the rhizome because that's gonna help kind of keep the insulation in there and keep them kind of warmer on the inside. Myself personally, I actually have mine in a tent outside in my garage where we do get single digit temperatures during the winter time and it gets really, really cold, but I do have a heater out there in the event that it gets that cold, I can kind of counter that. So I'm able to keep these no colder than 35 degrees over the winter time. Mine usually are between 35 and 42 degrees. So for mine personally, I am going to cut this back uh, because in the tent it also kind of stays high humidity in there, um, which I'm not crazy about, but it's kind of hard to avoid the humidity when you're watering in there and then you have to keep it kind of zipped up uh, to make sure that some of the heat stays inside. Due to the high humidity, I do want to cut these back. So that's something I'm going to be doing. Again, if you have to keep these outside and you're constantly in freezing temperatures, say you're around 25 to 30 degrees, often i actually recommend leaving this moss on here until springtime and it starts to warm up and then in that it, during that time when you want them to start getting more light you can start trimming this moss back but i recommend keeping that on during the winter time the other thing that you really want to do is you really want to trim off these dead pieces these these black pieces because what happens is especially if you have a little bit of humidity they could they tend to kind of generate some mold and they can kind of the mold can kind of spread from these down into the plant and if the rhizome starts to get mold on it it can actually impact it and, and kill your venus flytrap over the winter time so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trimming some of this dead stuff back and then uh, for myself personally i'm going to be trimming some of this moss back again the it's for you to decide whether or not you want to trim this moss back this moss can really help insulate your venus flytrap over the winter time so that it actually might help them if they're outside in the elements and they're really really cold that moss can be really helpful to them the reason this moss has kind of stayed green is because i've kept these just wet enough and it has been really high humidity in my tent um, mostly like i said i can't really avoid it but that's why the moss is still there even though they've been in pretty cold temperatures let's go ahead and get started i'm gonna show you kind of what i do and real quick before i get to trimming let me just take a moment here and show you how you can get your hands on your very own venus flytrap i'm so excited excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R. Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. 
let's go ahead and head on back to the video. So my Amptoboros here is really interesting because you can see there's a lot of growth here, but it's down inside now. All this higher stuff has died off and it's actually kind of being consumed by the moss. So I really want to cut the moss back, but I also want to be really careful that I don't cut off anything inside of here because you can see there's a lot of healthy traps down there. They're not going to grow much higher this winter, not until spring comes, they'll start to pop up. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take a pair of scissors here like so. Uh, these are scissors and tweezers that I got actually in my little fixed body kit. Uh, there's a link in the description if you want to check that out. A uh, nice little kit for kind of grooming your plants or Venus flytraps trimming and, and all that stuff. So we're going to kind of, some of these you can kind of just pluck off. You can try plucking them off. If they come off, that's great. If not, you might have to trim them back a little bit like this. That one is half dead, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off too because I don't think it's really helping much. And then while I'm trimming here, if uh, if you like what you've been watching so far and you've been enjoying the content, please make sure and leave a like on my video. Also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more great Venus flytrap content. I'm doing my best to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and you being here is really, really helping me on that journey. So I really, really appreciate it. Uh, liking, subscribing, uh, commenting, asking questions, watching the video all the way to the end, all that stuff actually really helps me out a lot. Any type of interaction with the video. So appreciate you being here. Make sure and ask a lot of good questions. And uh, yeah, thank you. But let's go ahead and start cutting this moss. You see I cut off most of the dead stuff and I can't even really see what other, there's one here, but I'm gonna start cutting this back so that I can get in there and really kind of see what else I need to get to. See the moss kind of comes off in chunks like this and you can see that that might even be a little bit deeper than I want, but I can actually fill in a little bit of this soil later with some of my own soil. So let's go ahead and peel this away a little bit. I'm gonna take the tag off here. See now what I don't like here, pulling all that back. Now I have a lot of exposed rhizome and I don't want exposed rhizome during the winter. So what I'll do is I'll come in here when this is done and I'll fill these in a little bit with some more soil. So that's another thing to consider is you could really expose the rhizome a little bit and see this one here. See there's a whole little extra plant right there that's starting to grow. Um, but what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll fill this in with some of my own soil. So yeah, if you have some soil, I definitely recommend, and this is why if you have really cold temperatures, why I strongly recommend not doing this because you really don't want these rhizomes to be exposed if your temperatures are really cold. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of fill these in a little bit with some of my own soil and pack it down a little bit just to make sure those rhizomes aren't as exposed now but they're also not completely buried under, you know, an inch and a half of moss. So, so that one's pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up just a little bit more. There we go. I'm not gonna get too crazy with it, but there you go. You kind of get the idea. See, there's a lot of new growth kind of coming in down here. You can see all that new growth kind of coming in down here actually looks pretty healthy. Uh, right now the growth isn't completely dead, it's just really, 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 really slow. Almost to a point where it's just completely stopped and once the temperatures start warming up and we get some sun on these guys, they'll uh, start to grow again in springtime. They're just sleeping right now. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna show you one more and then I'll kind of do the others and, and show you the after, but let's go ahead and do my uh, peach pit here. You can see peach pit, really, really beautiful, but you can see how consumed it kind of is in this moss. So we're gonna pull a little bit of this moss back. Oops, well you can see she's still firing there. Didn't mean to do that. Don't want, you wanna try hard not to trigger the traps best you can, especially in the wintertime because they're low on energy anyway. But again, you just won't be able to avoid that sometimes. Sometimes you just can't help but trigger the traps just a little bit. So it can be kind of tricky to pull. Sometimes that moss kind of gets caught up in there a little bit, but there we go. See, now there's our fly trap. You can actually see it compared to where it was before. And now you can see there's some, some of these kind of black parts exposed, so we're gonna get rid of those here so we can prevent that mold and mildew from 
taking over these black ones here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more soil in this one too, just because I don't like that rhizome being completely exposed. There we go. So we've got a little messy. I'll probably spray that off here with my mister here in just a minute, just to clean it up a little bit. But you can see, I've got all that moss off, and uh, now we're we're really lowering. The, and I don't think I talked about it a lot before, but really the, the reason I'm getting rid of all the moss if you have high humidity or a lot of or, or water or anything is is you, you run the chance of having crown rot for your plant. So if anybody's asking, hey, why is he getting rid of all that moss when they look like they're doing okay with the higher humidity in my tent and them sitting in water a little bit longer because of the winter time, the water doesn't go away as fast. Uh, the problem is that the crown rot can definitely hit these plants pretty hard this time of year uh, with the water. So you have to be really, really careful watering these and not overwatering them, but getting rid of all this moss that's consumed in the, the crown, this will help prevent any type of crown rot or anything like that. All right, so I went ahead and removed from the other two. So you can see here, uh, this is the low green. I removed everything. I didn't have to replace any soil on this one. You can see the rhizome is still under, so it's fine. And it's kind of ready to go back in. And then here is the seed grown, same thing. I didn't have to replace any soil. You can see the rhizome is under. So it's also in really, really good shape and ready to go. So you can kind of see everything that I pulled off from all these. Right there, that kind of pile of moss and, and dead growth here. I'll probably just toss all this. And hopefully when you remove some of the stuff you don't have to replace, but if that rhizome is showing like these two were, make sure to replace with a little bit of soil just so that that rhizome isn't exposed in the cold temperatures. You don't want that rhizome to be out there because that's the part that can, that can kind of get frozen and die. So again, the reason I remove all this is because I really want to make sure that these don't get crown rot. The fact that they're in a little bit higher humidity and then being surrounded by this moss, the rhizome, this moss holds in a lot of moisture. You can see it gets really, really wet. You can see, I squeeze that. You can see how much moisture that that holds in. And that's constantly around that rhizome and that can actually, that can give it some crown rot during the winter time. So I wanna kind of prevent that. And that's why I'm removing all this moss now. If you're interested in finding out, um, looking at signs of dormancy, check out the screen. That's a video that's about to pop up on the screen for you here. Uh, that's a really, really good video. I also have a video all about dormancy in totality, so make sure and check that video out as well. If you have any questions, throw it in the comments. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.